What's up gamers? Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about how to duplicate Pokemon in multiplayer. Yes, you heard me right. You're going to duplicate shiny Pokemon. Well, you could duplicate any Pokemon you want, but this is about shiny Pokemon. I'm pretty sure you want to duplicate shiny Pokemon. My friend and I put about 24 hours into this experiment to make sure this was right. We did all the things to do all the things to not do. So it's a lot of effort put into this video. So if you're going to use this as a creator, if you're watching this and you're going to share it to your channel, please just give credit. That's all I ask. Just link the original video or link the original origin where it came from. Let's get into the video. So there are a few things to remember before we go further. One, this can only be done on online or local multiplayer. The next one is you have to keep autosave off when doing this method. This can be done early game, mid game or post game. The host of the Union Circle does not matter for this method. Version exclusive Pokemon behave differently, and I'm going to be going over that specifically during this. And the big one is that you can only duplicate one Pokemon. Now, what I mean by this is if there are two players in the game, they can only have one Pokemon duplicated between those two players. If you have four players in that one multiplayer session, it's going to be split up like that. It's going to be completely done. So two players will get one Pokemon and two players will get the other Pokemon. So let me explain essentially how this process works. So let's say you are in a multiplayer session and you have player A and player B. If they have a shiny charm and let's say they have a shiny sandwich boost, then the game is going to program specific Pokemon with the higher odds to be around that player. Therefore, every single Pokemon on that player A is going to be predetermined by the system, which means if player B all of a sudden decides to walk over to player A, well, then player B is not going to be the one responsible for those spawns around him, which means if player A spawns a shiny Pokemon, player B will not be able to save the game and then reload the game completely from scratch and see that shiny Pokemon. Only player A will be able to pull this off. Now, if player A sees a shiny Pokemon, and saves the game in front of them because they spawned it in, player A will then be able to reload the game and come back in the game and see the shiny spawn. That's pretty much the fundamental of this method. So keep that in mind as we talk about the examples right now. By the way, make sure you subscribe to the channel for really cool videos like this. I put a lot of effort into it. So subscribing lets me know that you enjoy these videos and I can put out more. So now let me show you this in actual action amongst multiplayer scenarios. So here's scenario one. I'm a Pokemon Scarlet player and I join my friend Keats Pokemon Violet World. Now, during this time, I was using the bathroom and my switch was just left on. So what Keith was doing is roaming around until he finally found a Gyarados. Once the shiny red Gyarados spawned into the game, he called me and screamed as loud as possible. I then finally was able to pick up my switch and head over after using the bathroom and washing my hands. And I was able to see the Gyarados on the beach. You can see my players sneaking up towards this Gyarados. Now, as I explained to you, this is in Keith's world, but it has nothing to do with Keith's world. It has to deal with the fact that Keith spawned that Pokemon in. By the way, in this game, Keith has a shiny charm and I don't. So that Gyarados is 100% connected to Keith. So what I did as the player is I had to walk up to that Gyarados. And the big thing is, okay, now how do we duplicate this so we both get De Gyarados? Well, it's very simple. Since we all have auto save off and the only save that happened was as we connected to the multiplayer world, most likely, I had to walk up to that Gyarados and engage it in battle. And you can see that from Keith's perspective that I have walked into that Gyarados and I've engaged it in battle. The moment I engage it in battle, Keith is now fully safe to disconnect from the game. So I have no choice but to catch this Gyarados. Gyarados. No matter what, if this Gyarados decides to use a move and knock out itself, it's gone. It's forever gone. There's no way I can recover that Gyarados no matter what happens in this game. Because at this point, Keith disconnected as I made contact with the Gyarados, which ensures me that that Gyarados is mine. So I catch the Gyarados in my game and it's registered to my decks. Now Keith is going to reboot his game completely. And at this point, you're going to see the Gyarados show up as he reboots the game. And he's not in the Union Circle anymore. He's now in a single player world. But like I mentioned before, because the spawn was attached to that player, it's always going to show up for that player when they reload the last hard save in front of it, which he did. He hard saved in front of that Gyarados. So there it was the Gyarados. He battled it, have its own hard time. And then he was finally able to catch it. Now, 
if you open up the stats of both these pokemon you can see that they are exactly identical in terms of their move pools in terms of their natures in terms of their stat distribution everything is the same and the only big difference here is that it's generated its own id for me and its own id for keith and the ot is keith for that pokemon and the ot is me for my pokemon so that makes the players both have different original trainer names on the pokemon and we have successfully duplicated that gyarados okay so that was just an example of a successful overworld encounter just remember it only matters who finds a shiny pokemon right and the other person who runs to that person is the one that's going to have to engage it and the original person just saves in front of it and reboots as soon as the engagement happens all right keep that in mind we're moving on let's talk about mass outbreaks now this one's really big because what we did is we went a little bit above and beyond to test out something even crazier which was version exclusive mass outbreaks now if you know your game you'll know that Draclox and Clawwitzers are both version exclusive to Pokemon Violet. So as a Pokemon Scarlet player, I went into the Pokemon Violet world again with Keith, but this time it was for the version exclusive Pokemon. Now for Draclok, what we discovered is if I was to go to a version exclusive mass outbreak and stand there by myself, nothing spawns at all nothing nothing spawned i looked around i was like, oh this is a draclok outbreak but nothing was showing up so the moment that the other player came to me is when all the dracloaks started to spawn which means when it comes to version exclusive pokemon that are not tied to your player version exclusive pokemon are always going to be tied down to that version exclusive player just keep that in mind pokemon violet pokemon will always spawn for the violet player Pokemon Scarlet Pokemon will always be tied to the Scarlet player. In that case, because we both knew that all the spawns were attached to Keith, I was able to stay right next to him the whole entire time while we were knocking out 60 of the Pokemon to increase the shiny chance as well as him having the shiny charm. So at that point, knocked out Pokemon, and then Keith just kept running back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I went off on my own little adventure real quick because I just wanted to wait until he got the shiny. And then finally, he was able to get the shiny to show up and called me back. I ran back and then boom, right in front of me. There it was, the Draclok. So what happened was we, since Draclok is a very aggressive Pokemon, the person who found it has to make sure to not let it attack them. Because in multiplayer, when you interact with a Pokemon and run away from it, they will automatically despawn. So you have to be very careful with aggressive Pokemon. So Keith was able to see this Pokemon. And once I got there, we both saved in front of the Pokemon. Now, anyone who spawns in the Pokemon or the spawner, they can save right away as soon as they see the shiny. Because the moment they set down a hard save, no matter when they reboot it, they're going to bring back that Pokemon. So I walked up to that Pokemon, engaged it. As soon as I got into a fight with it, it was successful for Keith to see that on his end. He saw me fighting the Pokemon, which means, okay, Philly is now engaged with a version exclusive Pokemon. Keith then disconnected from me, completely just closed out the game and rebooted his game. And I was able to catch my Draclok. Once I caught my Draclok, I then got the notification that the online session has disappeared. And I look around and obviously there were no more Dracloaks because they have nothing to do with me my game or my player now as keith respawned back into his world the dracloak outbreak was right there and his shiny was right there and he was able to catch it and once we both caught it we were able to compare stats once again and they are completely identical but the only difference is it's my original trainer name and that is the big deal of this because it's not necessarily one person duplicating the shiny non-stop and they have their original trainer name and they're sending it over it's two people catching the pokemon with their own generated ID and their trainer name on that Pokemon. So just like that, we already have two Pokemon down. Now, the next one was tested slightly earlier and it was almost, it felt like a do or die situation. So don't laugh at me for what I'm gonna do in this example. Now, here is another mass outbreak example that is version exclusive for the Pokemon Violet player. Now, this is called Witzer. And the same thing really applies here that we did for Draclok. So Keats knocking out 60 Pokemon, doing whatever he's gotta do to, to increase the spawns of them showing up and increasing the shiny chance of them showing up by walking away from them, coming back, rendering them in and out. And then finally, Keith was able to get a Claw Witzer. Once that happened, he's player A at this point. I'm player B. He calls me over to him. So I'm running over to his spawns. I drop down. I see the Claw Witzer. I walk in front of it. There's actually no point in the player B saving in front of it, but I just save anyway. The most important thing is that player A, the one who finds the shiny, saves immediately when they see the shiny player b just has to engage the shiny so we were just saving in the video just for the sake of it because we were testing but player b after multiple testing never 
has to save the shiny. Only player A, the one who discovers the shiny, has to be the one that has to save. Player B just has to engage it. So I engaged the Clawitzer. Boom, I was in battle with it and I caught it and Pete's footage failed for that part. So, so he was still able to get it though as he was able to send over the stats and they completely matched my Clawitzer stats. Now, don't go anywhere. Don't click off the video because I'm going to be showing you the things not to do and I don't want you coming back here saying, ah, this didn't work, Philly. These parts are very important. Please listen. I'm going to talk to you about shiny sandwich mistakes and mass outbreak mistakes, what not to do. So mass outbreak mistake number one. This is taking place in the Pokemon Violet world with Keith. I went into his world as a Pokemon Scarlet player and we saw a tandem mouse outbreak by the Pokemon League. We both went over to that outbreak and the problem was that we were both next to each other during that mass outbreak, which means we didn't know which player was responsible for spawning in which Pokemon because this is not a version exclusive. Tandem Mouse is in both Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and a Pokemon Scarlet player can generate those in a Pokemon Violet world. So at that point where we're so confused, we didn't know who got what. He assumed that I was the one responsible because I was closer and I happened to just save in front of it and then disappear as soon as he engaged into the battle because we thought that's exactly how it worked. I came back, it was not there at all. I even rebooted again to look around it was not there. Basically, the mistake was that it was tied to Keith. And what you're not supposed to do is, if it's a common spawn between you two, do not stand next to each other during the shiny generation. Otherwise, you're not going to know who did it. And only one of you are going to be getting the Pokemon. Okay, so all of these examples that I just showed you were me going to a Pokemon Violet world. But now let's bring it where the Pokemon Violet player comes into my Pokemon Scarlet world. So in this time, he comes to my world. And now I am the host player, but that has nothing to do with anything besides version exclusive. We see an Azumarill outbreak in my game and we both head over towards it. I was observing Keith from the distance to kind of see what was going on. And Keith was just knocking out 60 Azumarill nonstop, nonstop. And then once he did knock out the 60 Azumarill, he wasn't getting spawns by respawning and coming in and out and in and out and in and out. So what we decided to do is we both ate a fairy sandwich to increase the Azumarill spawns because we wanted to prepare for the Charizard raid. And what happened was once we ate that sandwich, we then split up on our own ways hunting Pokemon down and he was finally able to bump into a shiny Meryl. Called me over, I ran as fast as possible and there was a Meryl. Now, the assumption I made that was wrong was, hey, this is my host world, so this Pokemon's definitely mine. So I saved in front of it, and then I said, all right, Keith, go ahead, go and engage and fight it. And then Keith bumped into it. I turned off my game, turned it on, and it wasn't there. Because, like I mentioned before, the spawns are tied to the player and not the host world. So don't make the mistake of saying, oh, it's my world. So I'm going to have that shiny no matter what. No, it's not. It was Keats Meryl. I reset it and I did not see it because he spawned it in. Now we did another test. That was a Meryl spawn that had nothing to do with the outbreak. We did the exact same thing all over again, except Keith was just testing out the Azumarils in the spawn nonstop. And then Keith finally came across an Azumarill. So this time we were like, oh, okay, it's 100% Philly spawn because it's in Philly's world. So I went over to that area, we saved in front of it, and then I told Keith to run away if the Pokemon was attached to him. The moment he ran away and disappeared out of render distance, guess what happened? The Azumarill disappeared, which proved 100% that it was attached to Keith, and it went away. Keith, by the way, saved in front of it, so when Keith was rebooting his game and came back, he saw the Azumarill, and when I rebooted my game, nothing was there except my regular Azumarill outbreaks and not the shiny. So these are things not to do. So in summary, remember, spawns are attached to the Pokemon player. The player that spawns them in are the ones that have to save in front of them. They are the only people that can reset the game and have it show up in front of them. The opposite player must come over to that Pokemon and engage into it. Version exclusive Pokemon are going to only be attached to the player of that version. If I'm a Pokemon Scarlet player, I will not ever be able to spawn in Pokemon Violet. Exclusive Pokemon, version exclusive mass outbreaks are the only safe mass outbreaks where you can shiny hunt next to each other without worrying who spawned it because if you're an opposite player, you'll know who spawned it. If you are the same players, do not be in the same mass outbreak at the same time as you will not know which player is the one responsible for spawning that Pokemon. Remember, if you are the person responsible for spawning, do not ever engage that Pokemon 
until you reset. Because if you engage that Pokemon, you will give the other player no chance to encounter it. And if you try to pull this off with four players, remember, each of the players have to do their own thing in the game, which means player A and player B can only get a shiny and duplicate it together. And player C and player D can only get a shiny and duplicate it together. Or player B can run over to player A's, player C's, and player D's and take all three of them, depending on what kind of situation you have with your friends. And the biggest piece of advice I can offer you is to check out this video, which talks about how to use shiny sandwiches to help you boost the rates in multiplayer. Click on this.